Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. So today we have another episode of Becoming Dangerous in Excel. And today's episode we're going to be going over some if statements. So we have if, ifs, if error, some if, some ifs, count if, and count ifs. Depending on the type of work that you do in Excel, you may or may not use some of these, but we're going to give a general overview of all of them. So just in case something like this comes up, you have some type of knowledge on how these functions work. Uh, if you know which portion of the video you really want to see, uh, in the description and in the comment section, I have timestamps so that you can jump to uh, whatever part of the, the video that you want to look at. Uh, but just to give a, a general overview again, last video we went over a few math functions as well as some cell referencing. Next video we're going to go over some formatting, then we're going to do some cleaning and filtering data. We're going to go over some lookup functions, some dates, and then later on, we're going to get into some more intermediate uh, type of Excel work. Okay, so for today's video, we're going to be using this personal finance calculator as our example. I like to use examples just because whenever I'm learning a new skill, uh, it's really nice for me to see a real world scenario and that I can use the, the new things that I'm learning just so that I, can, I know that there's some type of application that I can use it for. And also, shout out to uh, Kenji Explains. He actually has a YouTube video about this uh, this calculator, and I thought it was a great example, so we're going to use it in our uh, video today as well. So let's start off by seeing what's actually going on in this sheet. So what we have here is just a table of all the different transactions that are occurring. So we have here, starting from the month of January all the way to the month of September, just a, a list of different transactions. We have the date that the transactions occur, the month they occur in, the category that they are, uh, a description. This is just if you want to add some more detail into your transactions, and then the amount of the transaction. And then we also have a list of categories here. And I have this list here just because I actually have uh, lists embedded in these cells that's pulling from this list here. And what we want to do is we want to get these transactions into our personal finance calculator here. And what I see people doing sometimes, and it really pains me to see this, is that they'll take these individually and just type them into Excel. So let's just say, you know, here we have our rent mortgage at twelve fifty, and somebody came down here and just typed in the twelve fifty. And we don't want to do that. Uh, this can get really complicated if there's a lot of different transactions here, which this has a fair amount of transactions in it. But it can also get even more complicated when you see things like uh, these three transactions that happened in February are all leisure. We would have to add up these three transactions before we would go ahead and put them into our uh, leisure category here. So we don't want to do that. Excel has functions for this and this takes you know very little time for us to just go ahead and put these functions in to make this a whole lot quicker for us. So now that we know what we're trying to accomplish, let's go ahead and take a look at some of our if statements. So let's just see exactly what if does. So we'll type in equals if and we can see that Excel pops up here. Uh, if checks whether a condition is met and returns one value if it's true and another value if it's false. So let's go ahead and tab this in. Uh, and then you can see Excel is asking us for a logical test. So we could say something like G17, uh, let's say, is equal to zero. We know that's not true, but let's type in. So if that is true, it's going to equal yes. If that's not true, it's going to equal no. And then we can see that, of course, G17 is not equal to zero. But let's say G17 is uh, greater than zero. And then, of course, you're going to see yes here. So that's just a general, you know, overlook on how the if statement works or the if function, I'm sorry, on how the if function works. And you can kind of play around with this to do different things in here. You could say, I mean, you could really say anything in here. You could say, uh, of course. So kind of play around with this and see. Uh, it depends on how you want to use this, you know, because it can make things a whole lot easier for us. Something that we can we can also do it up here. So if we know that our mortgage uh, slash rent category is always going to equal to 1250, we could say if <clears throat> this equals mortgage rent, 
then 1250. If not, we can just say no for right now. And it's 1250. See, if we go ahead and change this, let's say transport, no. That's just a general overview of how that works. So we can make that easy, you know, especially if you've got certain things that are always going to be the same amounts, you can always uh, put throw a if statement in there. So that's a whole lot easier for us. Let's go ahead and undo that. Okay, and just to add on to that ifs. So ifs takes a number of different things. So we can say equals ifs and you see if checks whether one or more conditions are met and returns a value corresponding to the first true condition. So we can say uh, ifs this equals same thing mortgage slash rent <clears throat> then we can put 1250 and then same thing E4 equals let's say utilities then let's say that'll equal 250 okay and see we've got 1250 here for mortgage and rent and we've got 140 here for utilities but if we drag our formula down oops it's telling us something different here e5 equals utilities oops I need my parentheses in here remember to put parentheses whenever you're typing in actual uh, text and there you go 1250 So yeah, if and ifs are really similar. Uh, I think it's just a whole lot easier to use ifs if you're testing multiple different uh, logic statements. But all right, let's go on to if error and let's see how that works. So if error, you can use if error uh, for let's say let's say there's some type of error in here. So we could say zero divided by zero, and we know that can't happen. So it's going to give us this error statement. But if we go into there. And we type in if error, tab that in, 0 divided by 0 uh, is our value. And then the value, if there's an error, we can say call Jordan. And I use this a lot for my client sheets just in case something goes wrong with their with their sheet and there's some type of error involved, then they can say, okay, something's wrong here. Let me call Jordan and see if there's any way that we can fix this. Uh, and you can really put anything in here. Uh, you can put something like skip or something like that, or even just NA, uh, anything you want really. It just takes that error that was there and gives you some type of response back. And I, I think it's really useful, especially with my clients. They love, uh, Whenever there's something like that, it just says call Jordan. But, okay, so going on to the some if and some ifs, I'm not a huge fan of some if just because I don't, I don't like the syntax of it. So some if looks like this. You want the range, the criteria, and then the sum range. So the range would be, let's say, let's say we're looking at, uh, we want to add up everything that's in January. So the range would be, let's say all of this, we'll go down to February, we'll do all of these. And then the criteria would be January. And then the sum range, let's choose our sum range. And then close parentheses, and you can see $7,361. And we can see January comes down to here and seven thousand three hundred and sixty one dollars and then see if we change this to let's change our criteria to the february instead let's pick february see how it changes to two thousand two hundred and nineteen dollars and where did we start off with we started off here and let's go up these are all of our february that we included in our range $2,219. So that's one way that you can use uh, some if. So it basically says if this criteria is met, add these values. 
So now on to some ifs. I really like some ifs a lot. It just, to me, the syntax is easier. Uh, but I mean, it's just personal preference. Uh, you can use this if you have even one criteria, just like some if. So you can kind of substitute some ifs instead of uh, some if. It'll still do the same thing. But what it asks us for is a sum range first. So our sum range would be, this is what we want added, this entire range. And then the criteria range, which would be, you know, um, either January or the category, it just depends. So we're going to use this in our actual uh, personal finance calculator here. So we're going to do some ifs. And what we want to do is we want to add all these numbers that have the criteria of being in January and being our base salary. So we're going to do some ifs to start this formula off. Oops. We're going to do some ifs. Start off our formula. It's going to ask us for the sum range, and we're going to we're going to choose this entire range of cells, and then our first sum criteria. We're going to say we want Jan oh, criteria range. Sorry. So we're going to take this entire range of months, and then for this for this particular cell, since it's going to be our January and base, we want this January. Uh, cell highlighted as our criteria one. So this is what sets up our first criteria. And we can see, let's just say we end this right here and put our parentheses in there. That's going to add up all of our, uh, everything in January. So regardless of this base salary, this is just adding up January right now. But we want to come into this and you can see here, it's taking uh, these columns, this column as its uh, criteria range this as the sum range, and then this as our criteria that we're looking for in this range of, uh, of cells. So we also want our base salary because we don't want all of this that's in, um, that's in January. We just want the base salary. See, so we have the 3,500 here in base salary. We just want that. So how do we do that? We go back into our, back into our cell and change this formula up a little bit. So now we're going to put another column. You see that is excellence now for criteria range two. So now we want our categories and we're going to highlight all of this range. Another column in here. And then now we're going to pick our criteria two. And you can't see it because, you know, my uh, my formula is hiding where I'm at right now. But know that we're in L5 and L5 is our uh, base salary there. So we can go ahead and close that off and see how we got 3,500. That's exactly what we were looking for. We've got the January base salary, January base salary of 3,500. And that's how you can easily add up different, um, add up different ranges that you only want for certain criteria. So we've got our January base salary of 3,500. Now, an easy way for us to fully populate this entire sheet would be we can come we can come down and do control d to go down and then we can go across and then control r and that's going to put in all of our uh ranges but see how some of this isn't right we don't we don't have the actual uh information that we're looking for so let's go back and see exactly what's happening so let's click on this and see that what's going on here. Oh, see, so this is something that we got into the last video with referencing cells. So we actually didn't want these uh, these ranges to drop down. Uh, and also this range to drop down. This was right. We did want this to come down, but we didn't want this to come down with it. So is there a way for us to keep uh, January highlighted and to keep the correct range of cells highlighted in, uh, in this situation for this cell? Of course there is. So we're going to go back to look at this and see exactly what's going on here. So first off, for our sum range, we like the sum range. This is exactly what we want. We want this to stay exactly how it is. So what we can do is we come to our our range uh, of cells that we have highlighted here 
and we press the F4 key. What that's going to do is that's going to lock in uh, G95, which goes all the way to the, the bottom of our range here. But we also want this one to be locked in as well. So we're going to press F4 again for that one. <clears throat> and you can see how it, it locks in all of this. So let's press Enter and see what happens now. We're going to copy and uh, we're going to pull our cell down to, to bring that formula down. And we can see, okay, now so our sum range stayed here. And we want the exact same thing to happen for our month and our categories here. So we can see uh, here in our month column, we're going to go ahead and press F4 there and then F4 there as well so that this is all locked in. And then we want the same thing. Oops, we don't want that actually. We're going to go back into our uh, original cell to change these things. So uh, let's go back and okay, so now we have D4 to D95, we're going to lock these in, F4, F4, and the same thing uh, for our categories. We want F4, F4, so all of this is locked in. Uh, and for this, actually for our, um, uh, for our base salary here, we want this to go down as we move our uh, as we copy our formula down, but we don't want it to move to the right as we go right with it because if we go right with it, then that'll come over as well as we move our um, as we move our formula over to the right. So we really want it to just stay inside of this L column. So what we can do is we can lock in that L column. We we'll press F4 once, twice, three times, and now you see that the L column is locked in. So this should work for us nope actually we still have this uh m3 our criteria here for january so opposite of what we have for this we want uh our l column to stay here but we want for our uh months here we want the three row to stay the same so we'll press we'll come here we'll press f4 f4 and see now the three row stays highlighted well it'll stay uh it'll reference that so okay so now we can come down and see now we're actually adding up these things here uh do we have any investments in january we do not okay so we can see that it is working correctly let's make sure see okay so we are still everything's still working right okay that looks good uh we can so i have this copied down and then let's copy this to the right as well there we go now we actually have the correct numbers that's you know everything let's make sure let's look at this so you can see how our formula stays the same it's still calculating may uh our side hustle and all of our reference columns are staying the same as well. So this is working exactly how we want it to. And then what we can do is we can take this, copy it, paste it down here. Now this actually isn't going to work because we have here as our expenses listed as rent, but it's actually not rent in our category. So be mindful of this. Excel is very literal and you need these to be exactly the same. So what we can do is we can copy, paste that there and now we actually have our uh, correct number here okay so now we have the correct number here as well and we can check that to make sure we have January still mortgage and rent and it's referencing referencing all of the correct columns so we can come ahead and pull this down and then pull this across as well just like so now we have all of our correct information in the right columns with the right rows, just using all the correct values. And we can check this, April groceries, and it's using all the right columns. So I know we went over a lot just now, but you know, try not to let these things overwhelm you. You can always pause and go back to see exactly how we did some of these calculations and how we you know, locked in some of these cells because for me that was a little bit difficult when I was first learning about um, locking in reference cells. But just know that you can always go back and rewind and see exactly how we did some of those uh, calculations, as well as a lot of these calculations um, 
to give us a bigger picture about what's going on in our personal finances. So the last thing that we're going to cover is the count if and count ifs. Uh, and these are pretty straightforward, but I don't really use these a whole lot. Uh, so you can see here, I started out with equal count if, and it's telling us, uh, counts the number of cells within a range that re that meet the given condition. So count if, you know, we can start this off, we can tab this and say our range, let's just choose our range here. Uh, we're going to have January with some of February in there. And let's just say our criteria is January. I'm going to close that. And it's telling us that we have 11 cells with January in there. And is that correct? That is correct. We can see that uh, we're counting 11 January cells. Now let's come back in here and change this. Let's change this criteria instead of January. Let's change it to February. And it should give us three in here, which it does, of course. And count ifs is really similar as well. So we'll go down to count ifs here and counts the number of cells specified by a given set of conditions or criteria. So we have count ifs highlighted. We'll tab that in. Criteria range one. Let's say let's say we want to know um, we want to count how many uh, how many leisures we had within January with uh, leisure transactions we had. So we could do equals count ifs, our first range, all of these. Our criteria is January. Range two would be all of this. And our criteria range, our, our actual criteria would be leisure. And it should give us three. Yep, three, just like I thought. See, because we have three leisures in this range that you know match up with january as well so that's how count if and count ifs work i don't like i said i don't use those a whole lot but you can use those if you need to um on a you know as needed basis but like i said i know we covered a lot in this episode but uh you can always go back check out how we did some of these things and like I said, don't let it overwhelm you. I know it's a lot of information and Excel is somewhat tricky if you're just getting uh, into Excel and how it all works. But feel free to revert back and look at other YouTube channels as well to see how they do things. Maybe they may explain something a little bit better than I have. But um, I really hope that you come back and see some of the other things that we're working on because we will be getting into some more advanced functions. But uh, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. And if you've got any questions or comments or anything like that, please leave them down in the comment section and I will definitely take a look at them and answer all the comments that are th down there. Um, but yeah, like I said, I hope you really enjoyed the video and I'll see y'all next time. Thanks.